Hi, I'm Jane at Rockin' Worms, and I am finally going to show you how I make my veggie powder from start to finish. So let's get into it. First, I'm going to do is show you basically what I use and the equipment that I found makes the process better, quicker, easier. The first thing um, are the ingredients, and this is just the random selection of fruits and vegetables I have available to me right now. If it's a different time of the year, I'll have different fruits and vegetables. Whatever you want to use is good to go. So for example, tonight I'll be using bananas for my banana trees, avocados. I have always a ton of avocados from my veg guy. This is squash actually from my own garden. This, these are uh, long green beans also from my garden. And I have some celery stalk ends left over from Thanksgiving. And uh, lastly, here for tonight, I have banana peels. These have been cooked in my Instapot. I use them directly into my worm bin. I'm doing some experiments with uh, foods going through my Instapot into the worm bin, but I'm not ready to share, share that information yet. But these are banana peels. Just know that banana peels are really good for thickening your blend up if you need to do that because a lot of these vegetables are, of course, mostly water. Okay, so and talking about mostly water, because I will be blending things, I do need liquid in the bottom of my blender. And you can use regular water, dechlorinated, um, if you have chlorine in your water. Um, but otherwise, what this is, is just a random mix of vegetable and fruit juices that I've collected over the last couple days, couple weeks, a month, whatever. I put it in a, you know, water jug. Whoops. I put it in a water jug and I store it in my refrigerator, okay? So if I have beets or corn or something from juice from cans, uh, fruit juices from fruit cocktail or whatever, it just all goes in here. I happen to have quite a bit of watermelon juice in here uh, this time around because I got some watermelons from my veg guy. But again, anything that acts as a liquid is good to go. Next, I do have a blender. This is a Vitamix. It is what I use but any decent blender will work. I also know that some people use a food processor. So feel free to experiment using a food processor if that's what you have on hand. And in fact, if you do use a food processor, please let me know how it works for you because I have one in my cupboard as well. And if it works better, hey, I'm willing to you know improve the process as well. I just basically started with a blender, so I've stuck with it, okay? Now, um, because I am using a blender, I do use the um, plunger or whatever they call this thing to kind of move the uh, contents around. Again, just speeds up the process. Next, I, I will be using a spatula. And then after uh, the vegetable matter dehydrates and it's in sheets, which we will get to, I do use a large uh, Ziploc bag or storage bag, I should say, and a meat tenderizer. But just as a thought, you can use anything to pound up, hammer, you know, rolling pin, whatever you've got handy. And we're going to use that to just break things down. But I'll, I'll show you that later on. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the next thing, of course, is the actual dehydration equipment. Um, these are the trays that came with my dehydrator when I purchased it off of Amazon. And I did buy the silicone liners from Amazon. I said I purchased the dehydrator off of Amazon. I meant to say I purchased, this off, purchased it off of Facebook Marketplace at a really good price. Um, but these silicone trays I did buy from Amazon paid bust out retail for them, and honestly, I found them to be worth every penny that I spent on them, which was not terribly expensive to begin with. But what's great about this is one, they're a little heavier duty, and they have this lip here, which will help keep the vegetable slurry 
that we make in the blender, you know, in place and not, you know, spilling all over the place. All right. So that is basically the equipment that I use. So let's get into the process. I'm going to start loading my blender with my ingredients, okay? So following the blender recommendations, you put your liquid in first. You can see, I don't know if you can see how chunky that is because it literally is, you know, vegetable and fruit juices. And sometimes, you know, a pea or corn gets in there, or a little chunk of melon, whatever. It's all gonna get blenderized. And I just put it up, oop, let me turn it this way so it's easier for you to see. Um, I put it up to right around the handle and it's just eyeballing it. And that'll be, you know, give the vegetables enough liquid. You do need to have liquid in there for this process to work, by the way. Even though the dehydration um, removes the liquid, you gotta start with liquid to begin with. Okay, now I just put these out just to make it a little bit easier for me to add in while you're watching. So that's some bananas. This is some avocado. I get a lot of avocado. Hey, I do want to mention two things while I'm adding squash and beans um, and that celery. Okay, avocados are a very oily, right? Avocado oil, vegetable, fruit, fruit. Um, so I have found that you cannot make just avocado powder because there's too much oil in, in it. And when you dehydrate it, what happens is you get a sheet of the meat and you get this, you know, oil slick on top and it just never dries. It's like oil paint, it just never dries. So a little avocado into your mix works. A lot of avocado into your mix kind of makes a mess and doesn't work so well. So keep that in mind. The same kind of goes for bananas, but in a slightly different way. I'm just gonna put the rest of this in here while I'm talking to you. Bananas um, tend to stay sticky after they're dehydrated. Um, and again, it just makes it hard to work with and, and get it dried down so your vegetable powder is gonna be shelf stable because that's really what we're shooting for here. So again, putting bananas in is good, Putting a lot of bananas in isn't so good. Now I did not, you'll notice, I did not put in banana peels yet. And I'm gonna do that in a minute when I see what happens with the blend. So I'm gonna turn this on, Oop, turn it on. And you know what? That's good enough for this step. I am looking for milkshake consistency, but it does not have to be perfectly smooth. If you put in things like avocado shell, which is perfectly fine to add in, um, you might still have you know bits and pieces of it or a rind from some other fruit or vegetable you put in. You might see little pieces floating around. It's, it's fine. You're gonna re-powder this after. So, like I said, I'm looking for a milkshake consistency. And this is a little thin, which is what I expected. Because, again, most of these fruits and vegetables have a lot of water in it. So, this is where the banana peels come into play. So, I'm going to leave that there. And I'm just going to bring the banana peels over. Banana peels are a great thickening agent for your vegetable slurry. So, I'm just going to put in a handful a vegetable or banana peels in there and put it back on. Let me get the top and the plunger and let's get this back moving and because it is thick. Again, close enough is good enough. If I've got little bits of banana peel still in there, perfectly fine. But you can see now that the consistency is thicker than it was before, okay? 
And this is actually a good, good consist consistency. So what I'm going to do now is schlock it onto <laughs> the silicone tray and then start spreading it out. This is just like frosting a cake or putting spackle on the wall and you just want to get it out sort of close to the edges. Start with a little bit less and add more as you need to. Now, if you do overfill your tray, you just, you know, scoop it up and schlock it onto the next tray and move on. No big deal. Okay. And give me a second here. I've also experimented spreading this out in a variety of ways. So if any of you guys, uh, especially if you've ever made pizza when, you know, you were a kid or perhaps it was a job for you at some point or perhaps still is, this is kind of almost like also spreading uh, pizza sauce on your pizza. And I've done that as well. I just find the spatula to be just as easy for me. It's a tool I'm more familiar with. Okay, now that I've got it basically roughly spread, I'm just gonna tap the corners. And what this does is spread the <clears throat> slurry <clears throat> evenly around the tray. And the, and the reason I want it to be somewhat of an even thickness, again, you don't have to freak out about it, but if it's somewhat even, it dehydrates more uniformly. So when one part is dry, the other part is dry, and I don't have wet sections, okay? Because um, again, it just makes the process quicker. And I'm always looking for quick. All right, this is ready to go. Now we're gonna go put this in a dehydrator. So let me go show you that. All right, we're now in my storage slash old bedroom that's no longer being used by my daughter. So this is my, uh, <laughs> my dehydration center. As, as you can tell, I have a few of them. Again, I started off with Excalibur off of Facebook Marketplace. Each and every one of these were off of Facebook Marketplace. And there's lots of good dehydrators out there, so don't feel compelled to buy Excalibur. Um, I would suggest that whatever you do buy, you kind of stick with it, all right? So um, the reason being is if you have to move trays between your machines for any reason whatsoever. If your machines are compatible, it's just much easier, faster than doing it, you know, than trying to, you know, move things and change trays and it's a mess. So pick a brand and stick with it is what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm sliding this into a dehydration unit. You put the old door on or however your machine works and you turn it on. I'm just gonna turn it on for a second and then, yep, you can hear it running. And now I'm just gonna turn it off because we don't need that. For the temperature for dehydration, I just pick a middle zone. There's not really any information I've been able to find about the correct temperature to dehydrate. This is for non-human consumption. So we again, we don't have to be too freaked out about all the details because our worms, you know, are very flexible about the stages of their food, okay? Now, these are trays that I dehydrated the other day, so I can show you what they look like when they're dry, all right? Let's go back to the kitchen where we're gonna do the next step and I'll talk to you a little bit more about these trays and why this looks the way it does. All right, we're back in the kitchen. So hey, before we get any farther, if you're liking this video, please give me a thumbs up, a subscribe, throw me some comments, okay? All right, now we're back here. This is what the slurry looks like when it's dehydrated. Now this is brown in color, mainly because of the banana peels but I have had, you know, uh, sheets come out that are more red because I'm using a lot of red peppers or more orange because I use more squash or pump 
pumpkin in the mix. You know, again, the color will vary based on what ingredients you put into your slurry. All right, so don't think, oh my gosh, mine isn't brown, I did something wrong. Nope, it's all about what you put in to make the slurry. It will affect the color, okay? So um, the point is that it's dry. You can hear it crack and you do want it dry. So this has been drying in my dehydrator about 18 hours, give or take. Your time will vary based on your machine. And also, you know, the, the type of ingredients you put in there, um, you know, how long it takes for the moisture to get out. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just breaking it up into large pieces and putting it into the closure bag. And I'm doing it this way because I found that it actually is faster and more efficient. I can get more done uh, more quickly by doing this method as to, to how I started out doing it, which I'll show you in just a second. Okay, this is also what I wanna show you here is uh, see this you know, thin rim of, uh, you know, dehydrated. This is still vegetable and perfectly good to use. It's just the excess liquid that came out on this, you know, tray because I didn't fill it all the way up. So the liquid had room to run out and that just makes this little scrum a line. So you can, you know, pick it off and put it in or, you know, peel it off and put it right into your worm bin. So love it. All right. So I put, you know, three trays worth, but I could put in, you know, four or five. I don't generally put in more than that. And I'm just gonna push out some of the air and zip it close. Now this is the fun part. You get to take out all your aggravation. You just bang it up here, just real quick. Okay, and that took me what, like eight seconds, right? And I just pounded up three trays worth of uh, dehydrated material. So um, that was a lot faster than what I used to do, which was take the sheet and, you know, crumble it in my hand and put it in back into the blender to powder it. Now I can just, you know, do a whole, you know, three trays all at once and, you know, dump it in. we go it's kind of stuck in the corner there but that's fine okay so a lot faster using the baggie to and the uh, meat tenderizer to bang it up versus using my hand okay so now I'm just gonna put the lid on put it back on the old blender machine and I'm gonna powder it up is I actually run it on a lower uh, level because it kind of bounces the material and mixes it up better. See how it's bouncing it? plunger or tamper, that's what uh, the Vitamix calls it, a tamper. I have used the tamper in, in here before to mix it around, but I try not to because what it does tend to do is pack it rather than mix it, but I have had to use this at times, okay? So, you know, do what you have to do. All right, so this is basically it, guys. This is veggie powder. And I'm gonna pour it in because I wanna show you uh, what the bottom looks like because um, sometimes it doesn't work exactly how you want it to. And I'm gonna show you what to do in that case. Okay, now 
Ooh, here we go. All right. Here is kind of what you're looking for. See how the bottom of the blender is clean and dry? That signifies that my veggie powder was dry all the way through, okay? That there is not, you know, excess moisture in here. So this is good shelf stable powder ready to be packaged into a Ziploc bag, an airtight container, you know, whatever you've got is fine. Now, what happens if I pour it out, but I've got a whole bunch of veggie powder still stuck to the bottom? It happens, it happens to me. Okay, that means that your sheet wasn't quite dry enough. So this is how you fix that. You scrape it out, you put it back onto a clean, dry dehydrator tray, kind of spread it out a little bit. And then I found this as a tip. You know, a lot of your dehydrators will come with some type of mesh screening. Again, it may not look exactly like this depending on your brand, but mine looks like this. I would put the kind of gunky, um, chunky, not dried out, uh, powder on here, spread it out, like I said, and put this on top and put it back in my dehydrator for a couple hours. And then just check on it and see if it's dried all the way through. Now, again, a tip, ask me how I know. Uh, I did learn to put the mesh screen on top because as the powder dries, right? You've got a fan in your dehydrator machine and it starts blowing the powder all over the place. And you know, why do that to yourself? So <laughs> learn from my mistake, just put something on top. If you don't have this kind of mesh screen, you know, put on a piece of wax paper, parchment paper, anything to hold it down a little bit so that fan doesn't blow the powder all over the inside of your machine. And if it does, just clean it up. No big deal. All right. So this is the vegetable powder and uh, yeah, the worms, look how fine it is. The, the worms can just vacuum that right into their hungry little mouths and they're good to go. Now, what I am gonna do is I'm going to be uploading a video in the you know near future. Hopefully it'll be the next one. And um, that will give you the many ways that I use vegetable powder in my worm bins to get different results. So the veggie powder is multi-use, okay? So I hope you'll come back and, you know, learn how to use your veggie powder to good effect in your worm bins, okay? So that's it for tonight. Um, again, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you're using veggie powder, if you wanna use veggie powder, and, you know, let's, again, always share that information. All right? So I hope you have a good rest of your evening. I am yours in the dirt, Jane.